Hey, it's Junkman from VintageRock.com, and uh, we're here at the Rock Legends Cruise 2015, out backstage on the boat deck over here, and I'm with the rock legend himself, Mr. Dave Mason. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to uh, nice to have uh, a little chat with you out here on the boat deck, where it's nice tropical weather. You know? <laughs> yeah, where where is it? <laughs> exactly. Where are we now? Are we in Montana, or are we in you know the the are Caribbean? On, is this Caribbean or Lake Michigan? I can't. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, man, a true rock legend in every word. How many years has this been going on? 50 some odd years almost, you know, for you? I mean, how long have you been doing this? You've been doing it forever. Yeah, well, since... Um, well, when we first turned 18, I was... 18 was traffic, traffic. so... And 67. Six, and I'm 68 now, so... Wow. Well, no, I mean, traffic was 1967, right? That's what 60... I was yeah, well, it was right. Yeah, 66, 67. So do you guys do the math. We're gonna. <laughs> yeah, you do the math. Uh, you got a lot of stuff. You were a true road dog in every way. You're always out on the road. People get, you know, yeah, there's always some place that that people can come see. How many dates a year are you doing now? Well, we did about 110 last year, mm -hmm. and we will probably do the same uh, this year. Wow, it's everywhere. You mentioned that you're going to be doing the 100th anniversary of the city of Miami. Yes. That's yes. quite an honor. Well, yeah, I was <laughs> kind of surprised that they asked me to do it. Um, uh -huh. And it's got quite a um, quite a lineup uh, of people for it. Um, but yes, and like I said up on the interview, I mean, I did the uh, one of the more memorable shows that I ever did was uh, at the Miami mm -hmm. Marine Stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, the last but one show before they closed it down. Which was what year? God knows, I can't remember. What year. Way back in the day. <laughs> uh, Marine Stadium. Probably in the 70s, 76, 77. What was so memorable about the show, just about the crowd, crowd well, reaction? Just, you know, I, the, 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 the Marine Stadium was set up for, um, you know, it was set up for boat racing. And it held, uh, held 7,500 people was the capacity. And I had chartered a, um, 150 foot motor yacht for the day mm -hmm. so we were out cruising all around um and it started getting dark it started time to go head for because the, the stage was on a barge in front of the stadium and so we start setting out for the marine stadium and we get get there pulling in this place is lit up like a christmas tree and it's and it's packed to the hill and in the water, all around, everything is every conceivable kind of floating thing. Really? Boats, rubber tires. Kayaks. We had it <laughs> make a big path to pull the boat up to the uh, up to the barge and <laughs> leapt off and raged for an hour and a half and <laughs> jumped back on. That's awesome. That was quite a memory indeed. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Um, you've, you've done a lot of retrospect. Lately, um, you, your last recording, you, you went back on some of your your older songs and revisited them. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, there were, I mean, I just had stuff that was, you know, like I, I still have a bunch of stuff at home. That I, I mean, I when I'm home and I have the time, I'll fool around with stuff. Um, and a lot of, and some of my songs, which are you know, open for interpretation. I mean, they're like feeling all right. There's about 48 different cover versions of it. Right. So I was just fooling around with something and I redid a, because I love reggae music, so I redid a whole thing on World and Changes. Um, Sad and Deep As You was basically from a live recording. I did it in an XM radio event and it just, it, it was, so it was such a great track. It had such a great feel to it um, that I just felt, you know, it's it deserves to um, go back on there again. So I reworked that. I did a little live version in the studio. Of you could all join in. Um, and I'm trying to think what else is on there that I revisited. Um, this this fantasy. You can all join in. Um, Sad and deep as you. Um, Gosh, I'm trying to remember if I pulled another old one out of there. I, but then there's some new stuff on there, like a song that Jim Capaldi had started and then he died. And so uh, I took, I had some great lyrics to it. So I, but the music was very dark 
So I rewrote the music and uh, it actually came out as a great song, How Do I Get to Heaven? Mm -hmm. um, new thing called Good To You and then his instrumental, uh, El Toro. Uh, a new song, that brand new song in there called That's Freedom. Uh, just sort of my little personal take on the State of the Union. Yeah. And, um, uh, but it was just, they were just cool sounding tracks. And I really wasn't intending on making a new CD, frankly, because it's just so hard to, um, it's just hard for anybody to even know you got anything new out, right. really. And, but I, since I'm on the road so much, I figured I, I you know, we'll put something together for the road, for the fans. Well, it's got to be exciting too, just to reinterpret them too. You know, well, the same it was because they're, they're they're really yeah. I mean, they were they're just. I mean, my you know my the, the way I write is sort of I try to write about somewhat timeless things so that they're not dated in the in the, in that sense, and so those things sort of lended themselves to being redone. Well, in terms of reinterpretation, too, you mentioned, too, that, uh, you know, uh, we lost Joe Cocker this year. R did this great reinterpretation of your feeling all right. Um, tell, us your, tell us your thoughts on that particular track and the way that he did it and why he did it in his particular way that just touched so many people. You know, I mean... It's just a kick-ass version. It's just killer version. I mean, it was... Just, when I, when uh, Denny Cordell first played it to me, it was like, oh, my God, wow. It'd be great. And that, and that, I mean, the and the other key to it, of course, is that great piano riff. Right. That. Um, um, it's like Leon Russell. Was, no, it's I forget. I'm trying to think who the piano player was on there, but just a great piano riff on there, and so that became a hook too. Uh -huh. So the first time you heard that thing, you, you, were, you, were you just like, oh, God, nobody's ever going to listen to my version again? Or was it, or was it more like... <laughs> I really didn't. I, you know what? I really didn't. It was, I've never really cared about that, uh -huh. frankly. Uh -huh. um, I just, I'm just, I mean, I owe him a great debt of gratitude that he did that song. Because, as I said, uh, you know, in the interview, there's, you know, there's 48 other major artists right. recorded that song. Right. And it just never... I mean, I already last week was it's was set a sign up for another movie, for a, another commercial, and it just never stops. What kind of a guy? What kind of a guy was Joe Cocker to hang out with? I mean, obviously you've met him before. Joe was a very sweet guy. Yeah, yeah. I have some memories too of um, <laughs> I, I did a, a couple of times with Belushi, uh, doing Joe Cocker right, right. up on stage with me, <laughs> which is. Pretty funny. <laughs> he did that great version on Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. stuff. He, he, yeah. yeah, yeah. He did. He did it a couple of times on stage with me. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. What's 2015 looking like for you? You know, on the road. You know, you're gonna be on the boat. You know. Well, just that's basically it. I'm gonna be playing till I drop. You know, don't miss the last show. <laughs> As it should be. As it should be. Guitar of choice. Well, I play. Uh, I have a um, a custom custom Telecaster that uh, Fender made for me. Mm -hmm. So has it mostly been Fenders and stuff most of your, most of your most career? Most of my, you know, people keep asking me about a lot about the, where's the Firebird. I've right. used a Firebird for, but it's so unbalanced, the guitar itself, that I that just stopped using it. So mostly it's been, um, most of my stuff for live has been Fender. I mean, I have, a, you know, Gibsons and all that stuff at home, but um, but mostly for, for live. I, in terms of acoustics as well? The acoustics I used um, on, on the road, I used two, uh, two Alvarez Yari 12 strings, which they don't make anymore. Right. And I've had those for years. Um, but, I don't, but I would never take my good guitars on the road. So, Do you have a preference, acoustic or electric? Because you've done so much work with both. And not a lot of artists that, that can actually put out like acoustic albums and, and electric albums and just, you know, make them both work at the same time in terms of their songwriting. Do you have a particular, you know, electric over acoustic when you're writing? No, not really. This is going to be an electric song. This I mean, is going to be. I have, a, I have a Taylor six string that, uh -huh. that's really cool, and then I have a, I have a beautiful, beautiful Alvarez Yari twelve string that's, that's equally as good, or if not better, than a Martin D forty five that they made for me. That I picked all the woods out. Well, my question was, in terms of just like writing a song, do you prefer to write a song on electric or just oh, writing a song oh, on acoustic? I usually write on acoustic. Mm -hmm. okay. 
and that's like, do you write? I really write. I, I, when I, if it, if the song isn't working with just me and and one instrument, mm -hmm. it ain't worth doing. For me. Yeah. Then I'll just scrap it, throw it away. But it doesn't hold up that way. <laughs> well, it's the song, the song, and the song. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said that you spend a lot of time writing on songs. You're not like really prolific in any particular. No, way. I'm not. I'm not really prolific at all. I don't really. I just. It, it happens when it happens with me. You know, we, we always look forward to seeing you live. And again, today it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, playing out of a ship that's rocking and rolling, well, you know? it's going to calm down a little yeah. bit here. That's, it's last night happen. was a little challenging for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But it was fun. It was in a theater, you know, it was a beautiful oh, yeah, place, you know? Nice and then the next thing you're going to be playing outside. So. Yeah, it better be warmer yeah, exactly. <laughs> today, that's for sure. Well, Dave Mason, I appreciate you talking with us here at VintageRock.com. Um, you're welcome. Where's a place that people can go and see you website-wise? Uh, DaveMasonMusic.com. Okay. Um, and, um, and also my fa you know, the Facebook, all that stuff. So, again, keep in touch. <laughs> Glad to see you here and still doing your thing and, you know, playing great music. And again, people can find them on the road in a town near you. So yes. go see Dave. Go see Dave. Go, go see, see Dave. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Junkman, VintageRock.com, uh, 2015 Rock Legends Cruise with uh, the rock legend, Mr. Dave Mason. Again, 